Let's go ahead and talk about what's new in Gaia 1.3. 1.3 was released to uh, the Bleeding Edge variety just a couple days ago, uh, and it's uh, quite nice. There's a lot of improvements under the hood, as well as a bunch of cool new nodes and layouts. So let's go ahead and open it up. And as with every Gaia version so far, you are, re you are greeted with the splash screen where you can open a file and select some recent files that you have already been working on and additionally your quick starters now your quick starters are now laid out in a uh, grid pattern here and they are sectioned off based on what's happening and uh, what the build is and if you click on any of these buttons right here it'll load up a basic quick starter where it'll just show you a couple of nodes here and there and then if you click on the folder icon you'll have a lot more options which tend to be a little bit more advanced so I recommend going through these quick starters and just looking at some of the new ones that have been added there's over 50 of them and they all provide really good insight into some of the new features in Gaia 1.3 uh, and some of them are just uh, kinda taken from older versions of Gaia so like the mountain one we have the um, desert mountain uh, and so on there's a glaciated peak which is quite nice to look at for those who wanted to make glaciers inside of Gaia. This one will show you how you can easily do that and uh, uh, you can go from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually do a new build. So let's hit no. And I'm just gonna do a blank template. And as you can see here with blank, there's no more mountain or erosion node down here. You are just greeted with a blank canvas, which will help in load speeds when you open up Gaia. So no more waiting for that mountain and erosion node to build. You can just hit blank and you're greeted with the blank page and it just is done. Uh, additionally, the UI has changed a little bit. We don't have a north arrow icon here anymore. Instead, it's up here. So the orange section right here in this circle is north and then it will rotate around with your camera and always point north. So that way you can tell which way is north. Additionally, we also have the first person view again. So if you uh, if you hold down your left mouse button, you'll be able to move around like this and then your WASD keys will let you uh, move into your landscape in a first person manner, which is quite nice. We had this in Gaia a long time ago. Uh, it, more like, it was a lot more like maybe a video game, but it was taken out due to like a lot of different performance reasons and, and things like that. We also have the uh, the atmospheric fog or the aerial perspective back. We'll get into that here in just a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the orbit view and go back to orbit and you'll notice that these icons are now changed. They're a little bit different. They make a little more sense. Now under the uh, viewport settings you can see these three dots. Those are sections that you can work in so we click on that. It'll be the atmosphere, advanced, and colors those three dots represent these three sections. So I imagine as Gaia grows and we get more and more options in these available features here, there'll probably be dots that represent the different sections we can work in. All right, uh, let's go ahead and load up a node that we can use. And I'm just gonna pick one that's new with Gaia. It says hill node, or Gaia 1.3, I should say. And it says hill node right here. It creates a hill, it's a uh, very circular, uh, for the most part, but you can always use a mask to modulate it and whatnot to make it less circular. And this node right here is actually quite nice because it provides soft hill features with more rugged uh, edges. We see a lot of places like this in Utah as well. They look kind of similar to this. Uh, they'll just be broken up a little bit more. So this is just your basic geo primitive. You'll have to play around with it a little bit to get what you want, but I'm just going to use this for now just to kind of get, give you an understanding of how these different perspectives work. So let's go ahead and go into first person. And we can move into our landscape now and we can view what our landscape looks like. You can move below it, so you don't want to move below it. You can now get up right onto some details that you want and then uh, get a better camera angle and do some in Gaia rendering if you want. Aerial perspective can be turned on and you, we can play with the atmosphere settings a bit to maybe make that a little bit nicer looking. So we can go into here and play with the atmosphere 
and as we increase aerial perspective you can see we start getting a fall off and we can play with the exposure you can kind of see that fall off a little bit better so this might not be the most perfect example to use right now um, and also it looks like there is a slight bug still where the horizon doesn't really change but that's fine when we start working in larger scenes with more landscape features it'll be a little bit easier to hopefully get that aerial perspective so for now I'm gonna go ahead and turn off aerial perspective and turn off first person view just want to let you sh just show you what that looks like when you get down to like your lighting and your text your texturing and your lighting and you want to move in for that really close shot for like um, like a, a good basic in Gaia render scene look you could you could do that so all right let's move this back around so hill is new there are a bunch of new nodes that are new in Gaia uh, I'm not gonna go over all of them because this is more like what's new in Gaia 1.3 but I will show you one more and it's slump slump is really nice it provides these kind of rocky uh, terrain features that slump in a gradient almost and creates these outcove areas like this and uh, those are really nice to create more of a flowy hill so something like this we can then go to uh, like fluvial I guess if you wanted and then you can create those really cool looking fluvial lines that hills have that kinda go down uh, the hills a little bit like that and create some cool looking hills so that's just basic you can of course there's a whole bunch of things you can do but slump is really nice I actually have a scene that I will go ahead and show you right now that I used slump in just a whole bunch of different nodes in it actually but I will go ahead and load this one up it's called uh, hmm that one because this is my my first build in Gaia 1.3 is this one so I was just playing with a bunch of new things Um, and if you wanted to copy all this down and follow along with what's in this grid, you can. But for the most part, uh, I was just kind of putting things together here and there and just trying to see what I can come up with. It's, it's nothing really all that special. Let's go ahead and uh, see what we've got here. There we go. And let's get my, my color in here. Color Egan guy is about the same, except now we don't have um, we don't have a mixer node. The mixer node has been removed, and the combined node, which used to be a um, I'm trying to move my record thing here, but it's being weird. Um, uh, the the combined node is now what's going to be used for combining textures as well as height maps together and then when you connect a height map together the combined node will be this blue color uh, kinda like a adjustments uh, or warp node that shares the same color but it'll be more like an adjustments and then when you connect uh, sRGB values so like uh, sat maps or clutters or anything like that they'll, it'll turn purple and then that'll tell Gaia what it's doing so it's it's automatic that way it's pretty nice and this is not the final version of this scene that I was building out but uh, we'll just stick with this for now anyways <clears throat> um, one additional thing that's really handy inside of Gaia 1.3 is a height selection tool so if you click on this button down here it's a sample height and then when you hover over your landscape um, it should pop up with like a height adjustment down here in the corner I don't know why it's doing not doing it for me but if you click it should do it let me load up an, another quick scene real quick that one is kind of jank um, let's do rolling hills and we'll see if it'll work on this could be an issue with screen recording too uh, this one will be a good example anyways because I can show you the new notes section inside of Gaia that are pretty handy and when I do future tutorials I will be breaking down my reasoning like this inside of Gaia for why I'm doing what I'm doing if if the explanations are not all that great verbally you can always use uh, that alright so there it is right there as you can see here it's sampling the height in meters wherever your cursor is 
um, and as you get lower in altitude it starts dropping to zero so uh, and if you click anywhere it should sample that area it's being weird hold on there we go then uh, it'll tell you where it where you grabbed it it was about that the percentage of that landscape so maybe if you wanted to work in percentages, it'll tell you the percentage on where that is. You can also copy it in the metric version or the percentage version. So that's good. And it gives you a raw value there, uh, which is how it does some math in the background. That's how it gets its percentage. So uh, pretty, pretty nifty feature, because that way you can decide um, how tall your landscape is at its highest and lowest points. And um, you can use that for putting together and compositing your landscape in another program. Now we do have these notes here and a lot of the new um, oops a lot of the new quick starts will have these notes so right here on this one selected uh, it's per node so a purlin uh, is our base shape is created with a purlin noise octaves are kept low and reduce the height by clamping in the post process so right here we got the clamp in the post process and they clamped it in and this is how we they got that shape and then they explained the the rugged node here and uh, why they used it and then wizard and wizards a cool new node that I will talk about real quick uh, wizard is an erosion node and instead of just giving you a bunch of sliders so for instance we have erosion here we have all these sliders and all these different features here that we can play with erosion or, or the wizard node lets you choose just based on selections here what you want so uh, and it's and it does it in two phases. So if you didn't want the fine controls of erosion, you just want to do some fast, uh, I guess some fast processing to get some quick looks. You can use the wizard node, and it does it in two phases. You have phase one and phase two, and from here you can choose a whole bunch of different uh, phase options to choose from. In this one, they're doing fast erosion. If you did desiccated and apply the changes it'll change the way the overall landscape works looks based on that first phase and the wizard node can take some time so keep that in mind when you're building out at higher resolutions if you have some pretty extraordinary settings here you're probably going to to, to want to play around with how to better optimize that but in any case this is what we get so we have desiccated as our first phase and then depending on our selections here and phase two which is set to none uh, and then the bulk here and whatnot this is the, the effect we get and if we change any of these it'll look different so uh, it has strength density material uh, channel depth channel width deposits removal and phase two and then in other it has bulk and you can uh, play around with these different settings to see exactly what looks best for your scenes but they are pretty self-explanatory this one will be the strength of the erosion you got low strength normal high and this one's like extreme and it says use with caution there and then deposits you can have no deposits a normal amount of deposits or high deposits um, and so on and so forth you just gotta play around with it and they made this specifically because uh, it, for those who just want to play with um, like something simple with erosion rather than trying to go through all the sliders and fine tooth things so this is more of a convenience erosion node rather than like an advanced erosion node it's just super easy for people to put in there and click a few buttons and call it good kind of thing all right now for those notes we have a note here we can make a note uh, you right click on that that node click on node or note type in your note here uh, it gives you a markdown preview uh, of what it will look like uh, when it's down in this area and then it also tells you how you can use specific things like bold italics and underline simple stuff like that all right that's pretty good and again you can do it per node and as you click on those nodes the notes change okay so those are some of the more major changes in Gaia there are some under the hood changes that came about uh, let's talk about some other things that have changed there is no more invert node if you want to invert you got to use an FX node and an FX node is essentially just your post process uh, options down here if you haven't used it ever in the past you can now use invert right here to invert what you have so 
You can go from here to there, and then you can then invert it if you wanted doing that. So that's an option. Or additionally, you can just click on the node here and hit invert there. So uh, to clean up how many nodes there are without becoming too cluttered, there are a lot of post-process effects that don't require their own nodes. And so I kind of agree that the invert node would be removed in favor of the FX node because you can apply multiple effects to that one node to get a bunch of different looks. That way you don't need to have like 20 or 30 different nodes or let's see here, 3, 6, 9, 12, and 14. Uh, 14 nodes out on the the graph here. You can just use one FX node and that will allow you to do a lot of different things. And then if you don't want the FX node and you just want to do it per node, you always still have the post -pro process options. Uh, that's one thing to keep in mind and that might confuse a lot of people because it did for me too. Uh, I went to go use an invert node because I was used to uh, using it, but you have to use the effects node or the post process now. <clears throat> okay, um, there is also a C node which is really nice and again I'm not breaking down all of the new nodes, but the C node is nice. It's a lot like the lakes node uh, where you have uh, your your sea and then your depth and then your beach and all that but this one's a little bit different the lakes node will make nice lakes this one's good for making seas and beaches and uh, beachy cliffs uh, or cliff or beaches with cliffs things like that so let's go ahead and just play around with this for a minute let's get the level set up properly might need to increase it quite a bit there we go all right so with the sea this is this is more of a water effect, but you can use it as a, like an erosional effect too, because what it's doing is it's taking your water level and then applying a, a gradient along the edges to create these soft beaches. You can increase and decrease your shore size like this, and that'll let you make really sh uh, stark contrasted rocky points with soft beaches. And you can do that to make some nice rock. Uh, instead of this being like, uh, you know, uh, a big major landscape like this it is now more like a little bit of sand uh, uh, or what is it like a reef a sand reef or something like that like around this area and then you have like these rocks around the edge of uh, the beach and so on and so forth so now this is more like a smaller scaled scene or something like that you, you can do a lot of things with it uh, you can also play with the shore height, which will change how far up that sh that shore will go before it starts impacting the surrounding rocky area. So if this is really low, we'll get really sharp rocks. Uh, and then in even some cases, it's going to affect the way the shore size looks. So you got to have at least some shore height, height there for it to work. And then you have the variation, and this variation will change the amount of these like cliff and rocky areas that appear along the edge of the lands. Uh, or the shore and kind of change the variation in size a bit. So let's go ahead and increase that tad bit. And as you can see here, as we increase the variation, only small amounts are needed for this one. Uh, we now have like a beach coming in right here, but not over here, so on and so forth. So very easy variation here. And then uh, if you drop it all the way down, it is now uniform. You can also do uniform variation morphing, and as we increase the slider on the variation here, it's going to try its best to keep it a little bit more uniform across the, the entirety of the landscape, but uh, that's only what I've been able to notice. I don't even know if that's completely accurate. There is extra cliff detail you can check, which will provide the uh, small amount of detail, like in this area. I have it low resolution, but um, let's go ahead and check that. It'll bring in just a little bit more detail on the cliffs here than what you would get if you didn't use it. So could come in handy. All right, so there's that. Now one more thing that I want to show you before we end this tutorial, or I guess it's not a tutorial, but more like this breakdown, is um, when we increase the, uh, the build resolution to 2K or higher, I didn't try it at 1K. It could, it could still happen at 1K, but I think it's just 2K or higher. Um, it might work at 1K. You're going to have to try it yourself, but I know it works at 2K, so I'm going to show you this at 2K. Just let it build. 
A lot of the same functionality is available inside of Gaia as it was before. There is a really cool new render uh, node called the Sunlight node. Uh, or I, it's probably not a render node. Hold on, where is it? Oh, it's a data node. And that'll let you export uh, sunlight angles from that node so you can use it for like a masking and how you want like snow to appear on your landscape you can do that in Gaia which is nice so you don't have to do it outside of your program but um, inside of Gaia you can use the sunlight node it's different than the light node the light node is used for rendering the sunlight node just creates a mask but you can use that mask for a whole bunch of stuff inside of Gaia okay so we have this 2k build out now so this is what we have so far let's go ahead and uh, close out Gaia and as you can see here when you close it at high build resolutions um, oh hold on dang it I made a mistake you gotta save it first if you save it it'll ask you if you want to build out a cached preview uh, and then save out the files for the cache preview that way when you open it and then your, your next build you don't have to rebuild all the nodes so let's just do the landscape one here that'll be smaller and easier to build let's do 2k That was my bad. I knew it should have. I should have uh, saved it first. All right, there we go. Now we got our our landscape here. Let's go ahead and save as just me. Me. Mer. That'll work. All right. Now when we close it, well, in theory, it should have asked us if we want to build out a cache. But I don't know if that if that's after it's uh, after a specific size is hit in your RAM or or how many nodes you have on your graph or what. But it will ask you that from time to time depending on the situation, I guess. Um, and I think I could probably showcase that with my uh, the the scene I was building out my first build. I know this is going on a little bit too long, but well, this is the one I was working on that I liked more. So. This is more closely built to the, uh, the the final version of this build, and you can see here it's loading the baked cache, and that's because I it asked me if I wanted to save the baked cache when I was uh, saving it and then and then closing out Gaia. So it looks like we got some issues there. There we go. It's like the light node doesn't like the work after being baked. That's okay. I don't need the light node. And it's all, most of the nodes are still built out and things look good, but it doesn't look like it actually built it out at 2K. But that's okay. It doesn't matter. I just wanted to let you know that that's a thing now. It's, just, it's the same baked mesh, or not baked mesh, it's the same bake options that we've always had in Gaia. But now it asks you if you want to bake it before you close Gaia rather than you doing it manually. And you can check a box that won't alert you to that if you don't want to do that for your scene and you don't want to get reminded every time and then you can uncheck it in the preferences panel afterwards so there's that uh, in any case I'm gonna go ahead and um, call it good here and I will see you guys in the next video